So recently one of my subscribers asked me if I could do more electronics projects and since I really should upload more frequently and I'm currently working on a small series of woodworking videos, I think I should use this as an excuse to try to make two videos simultaneously and see if I can mix up all the clips. So I got these 18650 cells out of an old laptop battery some time ago and even though the laptop battery was really dead, these cells are still pretty much fine. They are still very nicely balanced so I went ahead and bought one of these 3S 20 amp battery management systems for them to make a nice battery pack. And if you're wondering why I'm doing a video about such a lame project, it's because in the end I'm going to use a PET water bottle to shrink wrap the battery pack. Before I start soldering at random without you knowing what's going on, I just want to talk about this real quick, just in case you're not familiar. So what 3S means is 3 in series. Technically this is a 3S 2P battery pack because I've got two batteries in parallel and three of these double batteries in series. And what the BMS does is to make sure that at any given point in the charge or discharge cycle all these cells are at exactly the same voltage. So if for example you're discharging your batteries, you're using them and one of the cells, in this case both of the cells of one of the parallel packs drops below a certain voltage, the BMS is going to cut off. The same applies to charging, if you're charging the battery and one of the cell goes over 4.2 volt, it's going to cut off and feed the other cells until they reach 4.2 volts as well. So batteries going out of sync if they are switched in parallel, that's absolutely normal due to slight variations in chemical composition, some cells have higher capacity than others, just with lithium ion batteries that's a little bit too dangerous because if they get discharged too deeply and you charge them up with normal current, they kind of tend to explode. Luckily these are still connected from factory because I didn't tear them apart while dismantling the laptop battery, so I don't even need to do any spot welding. Not that I have a spot welder anyways, so I just need to connect the BMS and it's good to go. First I'm sticking these capped on tape and paper sandwiches between opposing cells and then taping everything together with a piece of cardboard underneath where the BMS is gonna sit. And yes, you might argue that cardboard isn't the perfect material to build batteries with and that is true, but if it explodes, it's gonna explode and there is nothing you can really do about it. The next step is to solder wires onto the BMS and it's worth noting that you only need to put thick wires onto the main positive and main negative of the battery because all the connections in between are only used to balance out the cells so there is never much current involved. The wire I'm using is silicone insulated and certainly not rated 20 amps of continuous current but to be honest I'm never gonna pull that much current out of an old battery like this anyway so as long as it passes 5 to 6 amps continuously, it's fine. Now connecting everything to the battery, make sure to get that right or you might blow up the BMS. Okay, so the only thing missing now is to shrink it in and like I said in the beginning I'm gonna use a PET water bottle to do that because the way these are manufactured makes them shrink together when you hit them with a heat gun. The main difference to real heat shrink when using a water bottle as heat shrink, apart from the fact that it's a freaking water bottle, is that it also shrinks lengthwise. So your piece of PET heat shrink needs to be much longer than the thing you actually want to shrink wrap to allow you to do the ends first so it doesn't pull itself off the battery while you shrink the middle. I've never actually done this on a battery before, so I hope it goes well.
Well, that didn't go exactly to plan. I guess the bottle was too big. <coughs> That's embarrassing. Now, obviously the bottle was too big, it couldn't shrink enough, so I found a smaller one. Let's try it again. So this time I'm also going to try to do the middle first, let's see what happens. Well, it's not perfect, but it is. An even smaller bottle or a bigger battery would have been nice, but it does the job. Now clearly you want to be very careful not to overheat the batteries, since PET plastic certainly requires much more heat to shrink properly than real heat shrink does, and yes, I did stop to let it cool off for a while. I just wanted to show you that it is possible to do this with PET bottles, I just can't recommend doing it with lithium cells, because I don't want to be held responsible if your batteries explode. So do it on your own risk, or do it on something non-explosive. And just before I go, I want to show you what it looks like if the battery fits much more snugly into the bottle, and it shrinks around the corners much nicer. I just cut off the ends and now it's a nicely heat shrink block of wood. I hope you find it useful to know that's possible. And that's the end of this video. I genuinely hope you enjoyed. I'm definitely going to put a link to the BMS I used into the video description. If you're new here, feel free to subscribe and I'll see you very soon in the next video. Bye!